What's up YouTube? So today I want to talk to you guys about something I've been meaning to make a video on for a long time and that's an updated video on how to save your SHSH blobs. Now the last time I touched on this we had a tool called Tiny Umbrella which hasn't been used since iOS 8.1 I believe. So this is going to be a complete refresh. We're going to do this easy. I'm going to explain what SHSH blobs are and then we'll get into how you can save them. So let's do it. Here we go. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit first about what is an SHSH blob. And then we're going to talk a little bit about why you should save your SHSH blobs. And then I'm going to show you how to save your SHSH blob. So if you're already aware of what an SHSH blob is and you're just looking for a new method, an easy method to save, I will put the timeline in the description and up in the video here and you can just skip ahead. So what is an SHSH blob? Well, an SHSH blob is a signed hash used to verify a firmware signature in the bootloader. Sounds confusing? Basically, it's a way for Apple to prevent you from just installing any firmware on your device. So it's a hash that is signed by the bootloader that verifies that signature came from Apple and that Apple is allowing the restoration of the device for whatever firmware you're wanting to restore to. What is an SHSH blob? So a blob is a backup of that signature. So grabbing a physical copy or a physical backup of that signature while Apple is signing it. Very important that you grab that blob while you're able to. Now, SHSH blobs being said can be used in a replay attack or more commonly known as downgrading, which means you'd be able to downgrade if you have that signature saved to an unsigned firmware or a firmware that Apple is trying to block you from going back to. That said, there are some conditions that apply. So what I meant by that is you can only grab SHSH blobs while Apple is signing it. As of today, Apple is signing 13.2 and 13.22. Now once Apple stops signing 13.2, you will no longer be able to save those blobs. So by the end of this video, you should have your 13.2 blobs. Or if you're watching this in the future, whatever firmware is currently being signed, make sure you save those blobs. So once Apple stops, that's it. There's no going back. And then this is a common question I get quite a bit. SHSH blobs are unique to the device. So we need to use what's called your ECID which is a unique number burned into your phone to be able to request and grab and save those blobs. So it's really important that you grab them and you save them in a safe place. Now, why would we want to save these blobs? And if conditions apply, what's the point? Well, each blob contains a nonce key. And this nonce key needs to be matching on the blob and the device for the device to restore. So setting the nonce on the device requires a jailbreak, specifically a jailbreak with task port with a kernel task port available. So this is something that you need to have. And most modern jailbreaks, if not quote don't quote me on this, all modern jailbreaks allow you to save the device nonce. As well as uh, boot ROM exploit jailbreaks just like CheckRain. So this is going to be really useful for all these devices that are now affected by the CheckMate boot ROM exploit. It's very important that you save those devices or save those blobs. Even for older devices, definitely save those blobs. Restoring. So this isn't something I'm going to cover in this video. This video is just about saving your SHSH blobs. It's teaching you why it's important that you need to save these. But I will touch on downgrading and tools that you can use to downgrade, such as Future Restore. 
So downgrading to an unsigned firmware is possible, but it has some stipulations. Now, Apple's gotten smart. Back in the day, all we needed was an SHSH blob and we could restore our devices. Nowadays, the baseband, which is the firmware, a small firmware that is in control of your cellular signal, needs to match the firmware that you're downgrading to. They need to be compatible. As well as the SEPROM, which is in our Touch ID and Face ID devices. So this is important. Let's say you want to downgrade to iOS 11.0 and you have your SHSH blob saved, you've been saving them for quite a while. But the current firmware, 13.2 as of this video, or 13.22, whatever Apple, is not compatible. The baseband and the SEPROM are not going to be compatible with that firmware. But Let's say you want to downgrade to 13.1 and 13.2 is being signed. There's a good chance as long as there's not a major firmware reversion like iOS 13 to 14 or 14 to 13 or 12 to 11. As long as you're not doing a major jump, it's currently possible. And there's a lot of information you can find about this. Um, usually people are sharing on Twitter uh, or Reddit if you follow the R jailbreak community. Don't follow the R jailbreak community, they're terrible. That said, everything I just covered, this means that SHSH blobs are valuable. And they make your device more valuable. Especially when you come across people like myself who purchase older devices on older firmwares and jailbreak them. I have multiple devices, you guys have seen them in my videos, and they all have SHSH blobs. That said, there was a long time ago, right after the tiny umbrella, like I had mentioned, that SHSH blobs became useless, and a lot of people stopped saving them. And then a downgrade came out, and this happens quite frequently. Things change over the years. And just because you can't go back to iOS 11 today because the 13.2 baseband and SEP won't work on that, doesn't mean that in the future we won't see something new that will allow you to downgrade. And it doesn't mean that certain devices, older legacy devices, something may come up with them. You don't know what the future has to, to hold, right? And it's really important that you grab these and you save these and you put them away on a flash drive or whatever the case is so that in the future when something does come out, you're not going, oh, shucks, I should have saved my SHSH blobs. I think I did that. I did that with uh, iOS 9, I think it was. I was like, ah, I don't need my SHSH blobs. It was the last untethered jailbreak. Why did you do that, Chad? <laughs> so. That's the history of the SHSH blobs. If you're curious, SHSH blobs were introduced in iOS 3.0 and then were defeated by the uh, physical backup of those blobs and then we were able to replay them. And then in iOS 5.0, the nonce was introduced, which was defeated later on. And so now we're sitting at a point where we can only downgrade a little bit but that could be defeated too. So we're at the point in the video now where I'm going to show you a very simple, a very easy method that will allow you to save your SHSH blobs from a web browser. Pretty cool. This means it doesn't matter if you're on Mac or Windows or Linux. The only stipulation to this is we do need to grab the device's ECID. And this is a unique number to your device. And the easiest way to grab it is to grab it in iTunes. Now, I don't have a new version of Mac OS, but iTunes in Mac OS uh, isn't there anymore. But you can still find this information under Finder. Now I'm going to show it in iTunes because I know most of you are running Windows. And then I'm going to show you guys how to save those blobs online 
a really great website. And then you can back them up to your Google Drive or save them to a flash drive. So let's hop on the computer and let me show you how this is done. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we need to grab our device's ECID number. I spoke about this a little earlier and it's pretty simple to do. The easiest and best method is unfortunately to use iTunes. So we've got iTunes loaded up here and you're going to see with your phone number and your serial number, if you click on serial number it'll change and you'll see your UDID but we don't want our UDID, we're looking for the ECID. Click again. Now the second option will be the ECID and you will see here we have some numbers and some letters. Now you're going to right click whether you're on Windows or you're on Mac OS and you want to copy this. So that's all you need with your device. You can actually unplug your device now. We are no longer need iTunes or anything else. We just needed that physical number. So the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to head to a website and the website URL will be here. I will put it up in the video and I will put a short version of it in the description below. As of 2019, this website is working. In the future, if it doesn't, I will make sure to change the description and point you guys to somewhere better. So TSS Saver is the easiest way that you can save your SHSH blobs for your device. It's pretty easy to use. So we've copied our ECID and you're gonna see here ECID, we want to paste, and you'll see the same number that matches in iTunes here. Now the second thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to identify your device. So you can do this for the iPhone, for the iPod, the Apple TV, all devices have SHSH blobs and all of them can be saved. Next you'll want to pick your model. Now choosing models most of you guys are probably going to have the iPhone success or above. Uh, it's actually pretty easy with the SE, the 7, the 8, the 10 because there's no specific model number. They were all one model. The iPhone success is a little unique and I actually chose to use it in this tutorial for this reason because with this device you will need to include an internal name model or a board configuration. So there was actually two different board configurations. Uh, one I believe was for China and the rest was you know North American, international, whatever you want to call it. And I will include also this in the link below. The easiest way to figure out what your device is if this pops up for you is to head to Google, type in iPhone model code and you'll see here the iPhone wiki and you're looking for models dash iPhone wiki and I've actually got it loaded up here now you'll be able to scroll through this long long list here and we're just gonna quickly jump to iPhone so just hold on you're gonna see here up in the margin we're gonna have model we're looking for the internal name so we're gonna scroll down iPhone here we have the iPhone 6s so you can see most of these devices except for the iPhone 5s also does have another revision and the iPhone 6s has two revisions now like I said if you're in China you may need to put the um, M in but 99% of you guys with iPhone 6s are gonna have the 7 or N71 AP model so what we want to do is we want to go back and we want to type exactly that N71AP. The last thing you want to do is prove that you are not a robot and then you'll want to click the submit. It may take a little bit of time for your SHSH blobs to appear. When they do you can simply click maybe five three to five minutes afterwards on this link here and you will be taken to your SHSH blobs which will be available to download. Now I'm actually just going to jump back before we download them because you can retrieve your SHSH blobs or if you purchased a device say on eBay there is 
albeit slim, there is a chance that perhaps somebody has saved some SHSH blobs for you. So let's take a look at you, see if you can recover some SHSH blobs. Again, you're going to need that ECID number that is unique to your device. You'll want to paste it in this little box here and go get your blobs. And now you can see here that I have iOS 13.2 and 13.22 saved. And you can download this as a zip. You can save this to your Google Drive. You can save this directly to your Dropbox. You will have to come back every firmware revision, or revision so this isn't automatic. So when Apple releases 13.3, you'll have to come back and do the exact same thing. So if you have to do the model number, I would suggest you note down your internal model number so that that ease makes it easier for you. And then simply just save your blobs. Make sure you back these blobs up. I have no doubt that uh, we will see, or this website will be available for a long time. But I'm the kind of guy who likes a physical backup of everything. I really suggest you download your blobs from here and save them to a flash drive to somewhere safe. Like I said, it makes your device worth a significant amount more in resale value to a jailbreaker who's specifically looking for, for that. Now what's really cool about this is we actually get a few different app nonces saved. Now, I'm not going to get into why they're doing this too much. Basically, there may be a, ch a chance that some of these are used again so you could possibly do like a brute force and not have to use say a nonce change or something that you wouldn't have to have a jailbreak that being said we're not going to get into that just save these so you're you get four five blobs per firmware revision so that's pretty cool so there you guys go that's how you save your shsh blobs I hope this video helped you guys figure a few things out, learn something new that you can take forward. Make sure you pass this along to your friends or any other jailbreaker that you know uh, who isn't possibly saving his SHSH blobs. It's very important. I just want to say this video is not sponsored. This is not sponsored content. So make sure you like my video, you subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you hit that notification bell so that you're informed when I publish a new video. We'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.